Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing a 30 minute session for a client. I'm gonna be sharing distance, psychic wisdom, and energy healing. The door's open here. So it's gonna be whatever comes forward for their highest good. Um, open to messages from the higher self, healing chakras, past life experiences. So we're gonna see what comes up. I wanna thank you so much to the client for the opportunity to support you today. It's really nice to meet you. Thank you so much for sharing with us here on YouTube. So I'm gonna read your goals word for word and then we're gonna get started. You say, hi Abby, I have so many things I'm interested in. Maybe you can see what is for my highest good. I would like to receive messages from my higher self. I would like healing for my chakras. I'd like to know more about my past lives. Thank you, I'm excited to see what comes up. Okay. All right. I'm gonna relax, get in the zone here. So I'm just gonna put it out to the universe. What is in your highest good? But see if we can navigate some of these requests of yours. So right now, I'm still getting in the zone, presenting to the universe here what you're interested in receiving today. What can I share that's going to be in your highest good, really support you with wisdom and healing to empower your life, open your eyes to new perspectives, and share some messages from your higher self, healing for your chakras, get to see something about a past life. Where do we want to begin here? Okay. It's a little peculiar, but I see a pink pig. Very realistic. And it's got kind of a slimy nose. And the nose is what's really in my face. I can see this pink pig's nose. And it's oinking and sniffing. And it seems to be chewing on what seems like grasses to me. It's not like in a muddy pen with a bunch of other pigs. It seems like it has more of a pasture. It's really happy, this pig. It seems like this pig isn't necessarily an adult pig. It seems more youthful. And to be honest, when I really tune into this pig's nature, it's it's got these like big dreams. It it's, it's kind of reminds me of Charlotte's Web. You know, Charlotte's helping Wilbur, helping him, you know, survive so he doesn't get slaughtered, you know. So she shows everybody what makes Wilbur worthwhile. And she puts it in this advertisement in her spider web that, you know, he's some pig and, and people are getting excited about him. And so this pig here is kind of nose up to the sky, but also like I'm proud of myself kind of presentation. But then also the nose kind of wiggles and makes sort of pig-like noises and sniffs the ground and chews and seems to be having the time of its life. I don't see any Charlotte figure. I just see the pig. It's really clean, healthy, youthful pig. It's It kind of reminds me in human nature how maybe when we're growing up we have big ideas of who we could grow up to be, you know? And we could be an astronaut or we could be a magician or we could be, you know, anything we want to be, right? And so you get your wheels turning thinking about this great person that you're going to become, who you're going to be in the world when you grow up. It's very innocent, it's very excited. It doesn't see through maybe the adult eyes of all the steps and complexities to the life path and how you get from point A to point B. And if you'll ever achieve that sort of childlike dream, might not really apply when you are 18 now. <laughs> but it's creative and it's full of spirit. And it, it seems to me that nothing could ever stand in the way. So the message is wanting to hold on to this scene. It feels like 
your higher self is sharing this communication here about the pig and the Charlotte's Web story and the innocent child that wants to grow up to be maybe a celebrity or, you know, some big deal, right? Then there's nothing else in the way. It's just this innocent, joy, creative, and excited reason for living, life purpose. Just wants to hold this, almost like hold it in the crystal ball and just keep that image right there. Don't let the pig grow up. You know, don't let the possibilities of slaughter even become reality. I can tell there's something almost like perhaps you yourself want to hold on to something that's beautiful, something that could, if it could just stay like this, if it could always just be like this. You know, even Charlotte, she died, you know, she gave birth and her life was complete and she moved on. So even for Wilbur, he has to accept life and death, you know? It's a big story about that. And so not even he could hold on to Charlotte forever, you know? So your higher self is watching you right now. Almost like... This communication here, you're receiving it, you're digesting it, you're reflecting on it. Then your higher self is watching you process this information. Your higher self really wants, it's, it's sort of like, um, okay. <sighs> Don't let your heart kind of like um, when time moves forward and the story of life continues and there's moments that are harder from those innocent bright eyes of the, the childlike self, right? The innocent Wilbur, the pig, the innocent memories of our youth, you could say. It's, it's like um, the desire to hold on to it isn't necessarily correct. Because life has to be the whole story, not just the parts we like the most, which is great too. But there's something about um, if we let Wilbur die, or we have to accept Charlotte's death, or we have to see that the hopes and dreams of a child don't actually turn out the way that their heart had desired it. It feels cruel, you know, it feels like a cruel life. And so we could take that in that truth. Is it the truth that it is a cruel world? Or maybe it's just the story of life. So we could say the story of life is cruel, or we could say the story of life is wise. We could say many things about it that you could say are, are awful, intolerable, um, or something of, you know, you, you hear someone's life story and you respect them for it. You respect them for what they've been through because every single person on the planet has got some story to tell that's not necessarily comfortable. There's something about your heart, because your heart seems like, even as I'm starting to talk about it, it's getting emotional because... It seems to me that something in your heart is, is wanting to hold on to something precious and, and um, you know, sunshiny, um, childlike, and you're wanting to protect that energy. It seems like maybe there's a heart imbalance about this. So I'm going to ask your higher self for some more um, support. And helping to, for me to explain what's coming to me and help really define it for you. And work on transmuting where that vulnerability is. Okay, your higher self I'm going, asks me to be the pig. So I'm the pig. I will say that things smell really incredible. <laughs> Is it possible that pigs have pig noses for a reason? Maybe their pig noses can smell things really well like a dog. I don't know, but I feel like I can smell things really, really well. 
And I feel like the world is full of vibrant and interesting things to say because the world is so full of smells. <laughs> That's what hits me. I want to smell everything. What's interesting, it's not so much about taste as it is about smell. It seems strange for a pig in my human mind. It seems more like a dog to me, but I'm going to go with it. I love the way everything smells. I, I love the smells on the breeze. I love the smells of trees nearby. I love the smells of grass. I, I love the smells of everything. And I'm entranced by it, and I'm following my nose. And I am a pig set free. I'm, I'm literally a wandering pig. And I'm sniffing just like a dog would do. And I'm, I'm sniffing the ground. I'm sniffing the air. I'm sniffing the world. And I'm finding my way by following my nose. And it's the things that bring me to life that are guiding my path. Not the decay or the rot. But the things that make me feel alive are charming to me. That's where my nose needs to pick up on those scents. Right? So... So your higher self is, is recommending that on your life path and what you, you understand about your heart and your heart's translation about the life story, you know, and what's going to bring harmony to it. It's not let yourself sort of translate it as cruel. Um, if, it, if it wants to go there, it seems like it could go there really intensely, like turn the volume up and get sucked into it. It's really sensitive about that. But if you can keep paying attention, like the follow your nose concept and be this wandering, random, playful pig that's sort of youthful and um, doesn't really know what comes next, doesn't have to know what comes next, is in the moment right now following the nose, right? And following the things that bring a, a sense of life force to the heart and spirit of the pig, which you represent the pig right now. Okay, so you're doing this. Okay, okay. Yes. You're doing a great job following your nose and you're staying in the moment. Something uncomfortable is unraveling here. So your higher self is showing the next thing and it's, it's almost like there's a forest in the distance and you are able to see it. You're not to the forest yet. Sorry, this is like creating a lot of anxiety. <sighs> Just like a lot of stress right now. Okay, so you're kind of waltzing. You're like kind of a cheerful pig. And this is in all reality. It's not like cartoon, but very cartoon behavior. I could see you like dancing at each step, almost like skipping or something. And you're just sniffing around and just continuing on your way and you're going to reach this forest that there's something very dark in the forest okay it's it's obvious to me who's sort of watching from the sky and I'm watching you and I see where you're headed and I see what's gonna happen when you get there you're gonna have to face something really 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 intimidating <laughs> I don't know what it is yet <sighs> so I'm just gonna relax and let's see what comes next okay This in the forest is basically just a massive dark spirit being. And it looks like it's made out of black fire, but the forest is not on fire. But it does kind of have wisps of like flame and it takes up a huge chunk of the forest. So it's humongous. Then it watches you almost like you and you alone. The most important thing in the whole wide world. And then this darkness has its eyes on you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So your higher self is asking an interesting question. Why is this darkness watching you? You're not watching it. It is watching you. And then why would God lead you in the direction of this humongous, scary thing in the forest that you will definitely be facing? It already sees that you're coming. You have no idea what you're getting yourself into. And then the question is, why would God ensure that you came face to face with this big scary thing? This innocent, sweet, cheerful, 
light-hearted, wonderful pig? <laughs> that, that's the questions. Okay, so, so we're going to see this continue, okay? All right, the, the challenge isn't... The challenge is what I can only describe as something that is inside yourself. Because as you get closer to the forest, the forest also represents a bit of darkness, okay? Because it's a thick forest and not much of the light shines through, but the trees grow healthy. But when you go into the forest, it's dark and it's much harder to see. I don't see much light coming through the forest. It's, it feels a bit strangling. And the pig that wanders into a dark forest, why would you wander into a dark forest? Is it because it smells interesting in there? Is your, are you still following your nose? Instantly, I become you again in the pig body. And I'm at the basically the edge of what is like a big prairie. And then there's the forest in front of me. And I'm not paying attention to my nose anymore. I'm paying attention with my eyes instead. Something has changed. Almost like the nose was some intuition. But the eyes are some kind of ego fear analysis. And so if we are innocent and intuitive, we're just kind of at the will of the universe, just following our heart, right? As we go, following our nose. But if we stop and we start to ask questions if maybe I should be afraid or what am I doing? Why have I been following my nose all this time? Where have I wound up? Look at where this this got me. What a, what a fool I am. Blah, 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 blah. Mind-based stuff, right? And so now you're in a conflict between, you could say, this sort of light-hearted, innocent, inner child, free spirit, follow my nose, super bright and adorable, um, now a lot of mind-based thinking, circulation, fear, um, and now we have to decide where, where is the path leading, you know, where is the path going. But everything is saying keep moving forward. It, don't let what your eyes are picking up on um, tell you that it's scary or that you should back off or back up. And in fact, it seems to me that that when it gets scary, you should continue to move forward. Because this conflict is something inside yourself. It's, so, let, let's keep watching, okay? Oh, this is interesting. A miscellaneous sort of nature spirit appears at the forest. And your eyes do see this nature spirit. The na nature spirit is... Kind and not kind. <laughs> Seems to me that it, it wants to share something good with you. And it wants to talk to you and get to know you better. But it also seems to get joy out of once it knows you better, once it's lured you in, it wants to crush you a bit. Wants to make you feel um, like... You're in a bad situation that you can't get yourself out of. And it wants to watch you squirm about it. So it's kind and not kind. Is it always just not kind? It's oddly, genuinely kind, but its sensitivity is to the unkind nature. And so it can't seem to override when it wants to flip into something else that then could do you great harm. Genuinely so. Find peace with doing it, even. You're quite innocent. And to you, it doesn't seem to matter with this nature spirit is both kind and not kind. You feel like this is okay. This is a nice conversation. And if you wind up getting hurt in the end... Um, it seems like it seems like you can trust a bit of fate or a bit of destiny. It seems like you can trust the path. The sensitivity at the beginning that we see we want to hold on to this precious moment, 
And then we don't want time to continue where Charlotte's now dead, our spider friend, and you know, you know the the how life just starts to sink in, and it has some really sad moments in it, right? It's like when Bambi dies. Like, why does that have to be part of the story? Like, not Bambi, but Bambi's mom. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, oh, it's like, can't we hold on to what makes things precious and wonderful? So now that I see you following your nose and you get to the edge of this forest and you have this visitor here, you seem to be okay with a visitor no matter if it wants to torture you to death or if it wants to give you candy and lure you in. You seem to be okay with whatever because you're kind of in the moment and you kind of trusting the path actually. Okay, I mean, this seems pretty balanced to me. I mean, this... This seems like, okay, you're going to face this. Okay, you're not going to be too scrutinizing. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Your higher self tells me that every version of a possibility exists. So every version of a possibility exists. And this kind, not kind person is going to be not kind to you. And the not kindness is going to be on a level that you won't ever, in a way, be able to grow out of it. And it seems to me emotional damage. It seems heartbreak level damage. And I see you left abandoned in the woods. You don't seem to regret that though. Which is good. You see again there's some balance to this. I mean it's, there's a genuine strength when you can be open-minded to the process of living. And you don't, you can be perceptive of people but you can still know yourself. And you can allow yourself to get into dodgy situations. Because sometimes that happens. But you could also say, no, I'm creating boundaries here, 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 here. And suddenly, like, where do you exist anymore? You're just like bound in all this like duct tape and not able to move in life because you have to keep cutting life out of life and every single person in it until you're just in a tiny little closet. And so you do keep it a free experience. You do keep the world open. But what okay this, this is the next complicated part what's your higher self saying higher self echoing to me that part of this journey is rehabilitating mending healing discussing some kind of deep topic within your heart and so while it seems like i'm just having a conversation with you i am deeply tuned into your heart and some sensitivities that exist within there Okay, so it's the saddest story ever. You just, I mean in the scene, you're just a dirty, filthy pig, alone, starving. <laughs> kind of chewed up, spit out scenario. But you don't care that you're dirty, chewed up, spit out. You're just sad that somebody could make a choice to be unkind to you. That they would want to be unkind to you on purpose to be unkind on purpose. You, you suddenly stand up on your pig feet. Well, t four feet on the ground. <laughs> You're very serious in your face. You just do your pig stance and then you look. Kind of like looking into the eyes of your own higher self. Like you're looking. And you want to ask a very serious question about... Why was, why, why was this spirit, why did they choose to be unkind? Why did they choose it? Like, why did they choose to be unkind on purpose? And now you are the aftermath of those unkind decisions. I mean, are you serious?
Then I see something else happen. I see a big being fall from the sky, viciously so, almost like on purpose to land right here, and they've got a huge knife. And there's just this cackling laughter, and the laughter just echoes, echoes, echoes throughout the atmosphere. And this big sort of cosmic evil hand of this evil person takes this little pig of you and then takes the knife and stabs it in and starts to kind of cut in your gut, okay? And what's interesting is this hurts, yes. So you squeal in pain. But you actually continue to stand your ground in the dark forest. And in a way, you look at this evil cosmic being that just showed up. And then ask for an answer. Why did you do that? Why did you need to do that? Okay, this is where your higher self comes in. And is asking you... Because there's ties between you and people who have done harm, harm to you in your life, okay? We all have some story in there somewhere about it. But this question is creating really thick cables. Like thick connections to people. And your higher self is wanting you to return to the memory of the innocent and excited pig they following their nose, is now become the pig that is looking with their eyes and evaluating with their mind, then creating these connections, asking for answers that it seems to me are necessarily um, appropriate. Like, you can't ever get the answer to that question. Like, that, that answer... It... <sighs> You know how it was said that every possibility exists? It's almost like every possible answer exists. It won't fulfill your heart. It won't help you become yourself again. And to be stuck asking the question, demanding an answer to the question, as though now time st stands still, time revolves around this, and it, the only way for you to move forward is to get an answer, um, you're going to come into illness to be mindful of this, okay? You start to grow tusks and you want to, you, you, those who hurt you then should be hurt in return. So I see this sort of evil cosmic cackling thing, um, you know, with the knife got their jab in, okay? jabbed you really deep and whether that's like a physical event it's an emotional event that's for sure and it left its mark you know it's scar tissue now scarred you you want to you want to see what happens actually if you harm this person for harming you so okay let's just see you start by putting a this person's finger, it's like just a big cosmic cackling female energy. You just really quickly bite her finger really, really hard, like bite it off almost. Just like it's really, you bite it to the bone for sure. All she does is just watch you. And she doesn't yelp she doesn't back off she doesn't get the picture it's almost like she finds it to be a little bit humorous then you do something unexpected you you create a thought in your mind and then you create the thought around her soul most like you're speaking to her soul and this is some soul-to-soul -soul conversation that will always exist for all eternity. And in this soul-to-soul -soul conversation, you will ensure that she knows what she did was wrong because you will ensure it. Like, and it looks very, very dark and disturbing when you do this. 
It's almost like creating vines out of barbed wire and wrapping her soul up in them. And then making it tighter and tighter and tighter. But again, your higher self is showing that you're just binding yourself to somebody. It's just binding you to another soul that harmed you. Do you want to be bound to the souls that have harmed you? Because you then want to ensure that they know what they did was wrong. You will be bound to them and in a way the, the exchange will be hell. Because you, the hell they, in, they put you through, then you want to put them through. And so the only way to reconcile hell is to put them through hell. But the thing is, when it comes to this ping pong game, because I've seen it between souls again and again and again. You know, they did this to me. I'm going to go live this life, make sure that they know better, but they don't remember. And so now you get them back and they just think you're a jerk. So now they're going to come back to teach you a freaking lesson. And you were the one that was hurt by them in the first place. But now it's like, now they teach you a lesson. They're just a jerk. You're going to teach them a lesson. Now you teach them a lesson. Oh, you're just a jerk. Oh, I'm going to teach you a lesson. It's just like, oh my God, for thousands of years, you're going to just keep doing this with one another because you can't just let it go. <laughs> and so you, the pig, is, is pretty insistent that this cannot be let go. So that means you are God, right? So genuinely, truly, like we are all a part of God. So yeah, we are the spark of God. This is you want to take that matters of a cosmic consciousness into the, the hands of a human consciousness. And then you want to be the ultimate reconciler of this. You, you, you hear, you are listening. You're thinking, <sighs> you let this big cosmic evil woman go. And then you let the unkind nature spirit go. And then you are left completely alone with yourself and the decisions that you made. You let yourself be harmed by others. And then you cry. And you're just like a kid that got beat up on the playground for no explainable reason. And you don't know what to do about it. There's like no other avenues here except to feel like you're incapable of moving in any direction with yourself. And I see that's what the big fire, the black fire being in the forest is all about. It's a difficult lesson that exists inside yourself, deep down inside, okay? This is a pretty, pretty deep and profound conversation to be having here. But your higher self wants to talk about this, wants you to reflect on this. It's, it's going to help resuscitate your soul. <clears throat> Is there some past life meaning to all of this? You are seeking a wise answer. And I don't know how to explain it with words. I'm going to try though. And you're actually looking for some aspect of yourself in time. I don't know how to place it. Maybe it's the past. Maybe it's the future. Maybe it's inconceivable where it exists. Kind of, okay, I ask your heart, I, I could get some help explaining this. You're still in the dark forest and the explanation comes from a decision to not be in the dark forest for starters. Because you, 
And when I say that, whoever you're trying to contact puts an aura around you that's made out of the vast prairie energies. And there's something about the prairie energies where you can see in every direction. You can see the horizon. It's not like it's got the mountains in the way or anything. You can just see off into the distance in every direction. It's something magical about the prairies. Because all this darkness and hurt is like trees that are covering up the path, covering up your mind, covering up. And so this, this communicator, this someone you're trying to reach is sharing this message with you. It's take the prairies with you. And as soon as you hear that, I start to experience you. The pig isn't a pig anymore. You're just a person. And you're inhaling and exhaling the energies of the prairie which is like, <clears throat> excuse me, being able to see into the distance, like wanting to see, really wanting to see into things. Perhaps you, you're really wanting to, to see a deeper explanation or deeper divine truth to different scenarios of life, like this one. Well, there's a kind person, then why did you do that unkind thing to me? Now I'm going to have to be the reconciler. Now I'm going to have to bind to you. And then I'm going to have to tell you another lifetime about yourself. <laughs> and then we can go back and forth forever. And I'm not letting this go. <laughs> it's, it's like that situation. You're wanting to see it. You're wanting to see and understand this conversation in a way that it brings you peace inside. It's something that is making, creating a friction about and it's a friction because this is really, this is deep. I mean, this, this tells me that you're a very deep person. You have a deep translation of the world around you. You're trying to understand good versus evil concepts. You're wanting to hold on to your innocence. Um, you do have an adventurous side. I mean, here we've got this pig going out, following their nose, finding their way to the forest and still choosing to say, you know what? I'm going to keep being a free spirit. Whatever happens, happens then life happens. And now what? <laughs> so you're seeking out some wise communicator and it's not, it's different than your higher self. So wise communicator is different than your higher self because you seek answers like this. You seek clarity or awareness like this. You seek the clarity and there's something about the energies of the prairie that provide that for you. Is there anything else that I can say? I mean, I'd, I'd love to give you more feedback. Your higher self is asking you to remove yourself from the woods and to be yourself. Actually be yourself. Is it possible, just think about this. Maybe the reason why it starts off as a pig is, yeah, to introduce the Charlotte's Web story might have some meaning for your life. There's something adorable about little pigs. They're very cute, you know. There's something sweet and innocent. So representing inner youth or inner child's kind of free spirit energy, creative, imaginative. Um, but is it possible that there's, it's like it's time for you to be yourself? I don't know if the pig spirit animal is, has some kind of meaning here. I don't know much about the pig spirit animal because I've never really communicated with the spirit of the pig. But it seems like you need to be yourself. And th there's something about why, why the pig and now why the human. So just think about that, okay? seems like you, you something about the pig story is only appropriate in for so long of this message, right? Now you need to be the human and you need to come out into the prairie and you need to let yourself inhale and exhale this prairie experience. You need to just be out there and see the bigger picture of the world around you. And it's kind of like an alignment thing. This whole conversation is not superficial day-to-day -day talk, okay? This is deep soul level stuff we're having this exchange on. So this journey alone is going to do some deep healing for the soul. It's going to give you those messages from your higher self, give you a lot to think about for yourself. And even about the word justice, perhaps. 
and balancing of the scales of right and wrong, you know, inside yourself and with other souls that you've come across, and then with yourself in totality, you know. Okay, that's all I can share. Man, <laughs> huh. Like, you just never know what you're going to get. Thank you very much for this experience. And for those watching, if any of you are interested in having me take a look at something for you, anything at all, it would be my honor to share some wisdom and healing with you. You can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right, thank you and have a wonderful day.